Меня зовут Стивен Шмидт. Will be an interesting one, Сегодня and it ties into what Serge said about what yeah, I reminded him тем, from the uh, book of Carlos Castaneda. I woke up this morning and my computer crashed. So the talk that I had all prepared is basically in groups of notes. So I'm going to take the challenge of dealing with the crisis and make the best of it. So I'll do as much as I can from memory in my notes. The topic is shamanism in the modern world. And I know a lot of people feel that shamanism is an old system that is no longer viable in this modern, technologically advanced uh, society. We have all kinds of medical and scientific advances. We have all these modern technologies. And why would we want to bother with an ancient spiritual practice? I remember when my son first went into college. And of course, most college students know everything, and especially know more than their parents. And he questioned me. He said, why are you doing this old, ancient practice. We have so much more knowledge today, and we know so much more, and we're so much better off now. And I had to argue with him, because I don't feel that we're so much better off now. Many of the speakers have mentioned about some of the environmental crises that we're going through at this point, people who are disconnected from nature and don't have a solid relationship with nature. We know that there are a lot of problems out there that people are feeling depressed and lonely and alienated, and it comes from being disempowered, dispirited, and disconnected from nature, from spirit, from each other, and from our own soul. Now, shamanism is the oldest known healing practice that we have. There are records from a archaeological dig in Czechoslovak or the Czech Republic that date the practice of shamanism back at least 60,000 years. So shamanism has been around for at least 60,000 years. And the shamans have been working on the technologies that they have. And by technologies, I mean the knowledge, the skills, the tools, the expertise to bring about healing, empowerment, and wisdom to whoever is willing to use the practice. Now, shamanism is a very misunderstood term. It's also a very broad term. It's like the word food. If I ask you if you would like some food and you're hungry, you'll say yes. The problem is you have no idea what category of food I'm going to give you. The same thing with the word shamanism. <coughs> shamanism is an anthropological term that was used to cover a variety of different traditions of healing and spiritual practice. There are a variety of different variations in shamanism. They've got what I call cultural specific traditional shamanism, such as Siberian shamanism, Celtic shamanism, North American shamanism, Mayan shamanism that have very specific and different clothing, tools, practices, taboos. 
you also have what's called neo-shamanism that is a more recent creation that came about in the around the 1990s that was a combination of the book that Merciad Eliade wrote on shamanism and Michael Harner who some of you saw in the film that Vladimir put together the other night that is neo-shamanism is kind of a modern adaptation of some of the practices and wisdom of shamanism that is geared more toward urban settings, so like the modern people and how they can use their practices. Because one of the things about the traditional forms of shamanism is that you do need to be trained by a specific shaman in order to truly practice that form of shamanism. There are several things about shamanism that are at odds with the Western thinking. Some of the common beliefs of shamanism have to do with the fact that spirits, spirits do exist and play important and can play important parts in our lives. That shamans can communicate with spirits and the spirit world that spirits can be good or evil, that the shaman's spirit leaves his or her body, travels to the spirit realm, and connects and comes back. And shamanism also teaches us that everything that exists has, is alive and has life. So that we can connect with the trees, we can connect with the rocks, we can connect with all the elements such as water and wind and fire and earth, and we can learn from them. In the shamanic cosmology, there's also the three worlds. There's the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. The upper world is where we find spirit helpers in human form. The lower world is where we typically find spirit helpers in animal form. And in the middle world, you have both the visible, like what we see here, the the tangible as well as the invisible spirits also. And the technology of shamanism tells us or shows us how we can access that, those resources to help transform our lives. Shamanism, the the main practitioner of shamanism is a shaman. And a shaman is typically someone who is recognized at birth or who goes through a major crisis and has a certain ability that other people in the community do not. Sometimes they're recognized very early as being able to communicate with the spirit realm. And so that is seen as a valuable aspect of who they are. They also, shamans have the ability to access altered states of consciousness at will. They fulfill the needs of the community that are otherwise not met. And they act as mediators between the sacred and the profane. The shaman had many different roles. Some were of healers, some were of mediators, some are escorting souls after a person has died to where it needs to go. Some has to do with retrieving lost souls. There's a variety of different roles that the uh, shaman can hold. One of the common practices in shamanism is a shamanic journey. And 
Basically, what that is, is that the shaman uses some kind of a means to induce a shift in consciousness. And it could be ethnogens or plant medicines, it could be healing instruments such as drumming to shift their consciousness. So a part of their soul, called the free soul, that part of us that does leave the body in out-of-body experiences, astral projection, things of that nature, that that part of the soul can leave and actually go to the spirit realm, connect with spirit entities, have an interaction with them, and for the purpose of gaining knowledge, for gaining power, for gaining healing, and being able to bring it back here uh, on this level. И затем возвращается к шаману, возвращается в тело шамана. I'm not going to go too deep into what the shamanic journey is because I'm doing a talk at six today about going, going deeper into shamanic counseling and the use of the shamanic journey for that. Так что там будет более подробный разбор. Что там будет более подробный разбор? Shamans have been persecuted. To almost to the point of extinction. Fortunately, in the late 1990s, there were certain organizations that came together to support the shamans that are still living and have been setting up funds to bring money to them, to also help them with their training of future generation. My feeling is that now there's a, a shift currently with the feeling about shamanism. There's quite a few people in this audience that do shamanic work and that are bringing shamanic work to the world. The, um, Pierre Luigi mentioned yesterday that there are people who say that spiritual practice is dangerous. And my feeling that most of these people are those that have never actually had an experience of shamanic practice. In my 44 years of doing shamanic journeying and doing shamanic healing, I have never seen a dangerous aspect of the shamanic practice. Now, that's not to say there are not dangers connected with shamanism. We all know the dark side of shamanism, the shamanic warfare that that has, has, does go on sometimes. But for the most part, what I found is that shamanism is a great means to bring about healing and empowerment. <clears throat> Several years ago, I conducted a research project where I wanted to see, because I was doing the shamanic Counseling. I wanted to see what were and if there were therapeutic benefits to having people learn how to journey. People who were not shamans, people who were not in that from an indigenous culture, who knew nothing about shamanic practices and wisdom. And I did a, a, a study to teach them how to do the shamanic journey or initiate them into the shamanic journey practice. And for those who are researchers, it was a study with a two-group pre-test, post-test, randomized, experimental design combined with qualitative interviews. And the purpose of this was both to look for the therapeutic benefits as well as the lived experience. What, it was, what was it like? for people to learn this practice, what was it like, how did it change their lives. And the, the findings were pretty strong. There was a crossover in uh, anxiety, so that the treatment group anxiety went down, while the control group anxiety went up. And this was during a very stressful time of a financial breakdown in the United States. The idea of empowerment was increased by those who learned how to do the shamanic journey and 
was not increased at all with those who were in the control group. And there was a major reorientation of their spirituality. And all these people had made a stronger connection to their, their spiritual practice. I want to say, bring about like some of the because part of what I'm trying to show is that there are healing aspects that come about from shamanism and that there are therapeutic benefits. Some of the participants who shared what was happening with them, I just want to say a few things. One said, I have a sense of another world, another reality. This other world is not accessible through our normal way of being. And I believe much more is possible than I've ever thought before, meaning I can get past my own perceived limitations. So with this person, there was a major expansion of consciousness and feeling that there was something more that they could tap into. And, um, another person made a comment, I don't have a knee-jerk reaction to problems anymore. I take time to settle before flying off my broom, which for a type A personality is a huge, huge plus, a tool. And I know that I'll never really, that all, but I never really cared to do anything about I can do now. And they had an ability, they felt that there were things that they could do that they couldn't do before. Another person said, I can get answers to any questions I have by using the shamanic journey provides a calming effect. So a lot of people have mentioned how it did bring about a calming effect how it did empower them to take more action in their lives and create what they wanted, and that it was a new way of looking at their spirituality. So everyone who went through it had positive effects. One of the questions I had in doing this study was to see if there were any dangers, because when I was planning to do the research, I was warned not to do it because I would have problems with people because I was teaching people to dissociate and I was going to probably create some kind of schizophrenic or psychotic um, experience. None of that ever happened, at least with the group that I worked with. Однако опасения не оправдались. Никто из испытуемой группы не столкнулся с негативными последствиями для психики. One of the things that came out of this study for me and the work that I've been doing with people over all these years is the value of connecting with spirit and having a real sense of your soul. You know, psychology is the study of the soul, psychology. And shamanism is a way to connect on a very deep soulful level and a way to not only nurture but uh, nourish our souls so that we can move forward. It brings up, there's a quote by Carl Jung that to me really spoke to what came out of this, um, this study. The main interest in my work is not with the treatment of neurosis, but rather with the approach to the numinous. But the fact is that the approach to the numinous is a real therapy. And as much as you attain to the numinous experience, you are released from the curse of pathology. And this is what I've found over and over again with people that come to my practice. Now, I'm not a licensed therapist, and I, don't do I do not do psychotherapy. I don't diagnose, nor do I treat um, psychological disorders. And I found that there's a, a large group of people that the kind of work that I do, the shamanic counseling, is really very much appreciated. There have been several people who have come to me that have exhausted 
ко мне приходили люди, которые испытывали разочарование в обычных врачах, поскольку врачи так и не смогли понять, что с ними происходит. There have been people that have gone to therapy and haven't been able to solve that problem that they went to therapy for. Not to say there's a problem with psychotherapy. It's just to say that we also, as we know from transpersonal psychology, that there are issues and problems that need to be dealt on a spiritual level. трудности, с которыми нужно работать на духовном уровне. Three of the things that I do that, that come from shamanic practice is one, shamanic counseling, where I teach people how to journey. Another is soul retrieval, where I work to bring back lost parts of people's souls. That the theory is that whenever we have some kind of a trauma or a trauma, traumatic experience, that a part of our soul leaves and goes off to another realm. And part of the role of the shaman is to be able to journey to that spirit realm to connect with that lost soul part and bring it back to the person whose soul part was missing. Now I've seen this over and over again that there's a real power, there's a real transformative change that happens when someone has a soul retrieval. And I know that's not something that most psychotherapists will work with. And there are many times where the soul retrieval, which is a fairly simple yet complex process, can make a major change in a person's life. Um, How much longer? So, what I want to do is, um, Я бы хотел сделать следующее. Talk a little bit about Я бы хотел немного поговорить how we can use some of these как мы можем использовать некоторые из этих практик. Лучше приведу пару примеров. There was one person that had been going to medical, I said, medical doctors and had many tests done, and the results were nothing. There was no, they couldn't find anything wrong. They could not um, treat him. He just had this. Um, he had this problem for many years. I taught him how to journey. On one of the journeys, he actually had a healing happen within this, and this whole symptom that he'd been suffering. There was also another woman that I worked with who had her father had died when she was very young. And for most of her life she had lived with the the false notion that her father didn't like her and that she was And by doing one, and she had gone to therapy many times for this and had never been able to resolve the issue. And in one 15-minute journey, she connected to the spirit of her father in the upper world, and he told her what really happened and changed the narration that she was speaking, the story she had about her life and herself, his feeling about her, and it made an instant change in her, and it positively affected her relationships with men. Положительные изменения, особенно в сфере отношений с мужчинами. I want to talk a little bit about how shamanic practice has benefited my life. Поговорю немного о том, как Part of it has to do with the ability to journey for myself on a regular basis whenever I need guidance in regards to a personal problem, conflict, decision I need to, be, I need to make or when I'm feeling stuck. And it's a way that I can get information 
about Кроме either того, to fully understand the situation or action that I can take to change the situation. There was a situation that happened uh, last time I was in Moscow when I it was during January, it was fairly cold, and I was going, I went walking to the health food store. And when I walked into the health food store, I couldn't see. And I couldn't focus on the labels. I had no ability to focus and see what the labels were and what the prices were. And I had to have somebody help me look at and figure out what these uh, prices were. So I went back to my apartment and uh, called my friend because I was a little concerned about the fact I couldn't see. And she had a friend there that told me that it was just the cold. It was the cold uh, air. I'd done something with my eyes, and if I just warm up, it'll go away. Well, I made dinner, and by the time I was going to bed, which was several hours later, I still couldn't see. So what I did is I went on, I took a journey, and I asked to be healed. I asked some healing on this to happen. And I met a healer in human form that performs several practices on me with different elements like water and fire, cutting me up, dismembering me, putting me back together, having me doing some certain practices. And when I came back from the journey, my eyes were completely healed. There was no residual effect with that whatsoever. Um, some of the benefits, too, as I already talked about, that one of the problems that people feel depressed and they feel lonely and they feel that they're kind of only by themselves. That's one of the things I've noticed with having the shamanic practice that I do I never feel lonely. Now, in the shamanic idea that we have behind us and all of us, tens of thousands of ancestors who have come before us, and in front of us, we have tens of thousands of descendants who have yet to come. But the energy is there. As you know from the film, if you saw it the other night, energy is a very important thing in shamanism. And that energy from all these ancestors and all these descendants is very powerful. Another way that it has, this practice has affected me in a positive way is I've made my backyard into a sanctuary. And in my backyard, we do rituals, we do ceremonies. When my teachers come from Peru, they do ceremonies back there too. So it creates a very positive healing energy in that area. Every morning I go out and I go to the medicine wheel. There's a medicine wheel, labyrinth, ceremonial fire pit, a Christian grotto, a peace garden, a Tibetan Buddhist corner, there's various different honorings of the different spiritual traditions. And I start my day by doing a shamanic morning prayer. And it's basically a prayer where I thank, I'm thankful for all the blessings I have, and I give gratitude to the spirits, and I ask them for their guidance and protection. And it sets a tone for my whole day. And you know how you start your day sets a tone for the rest of it. And it's one of the things I've found that's been very beneficial is to actually connect with spirit, connect with the earth, connect with my own soul on a daily basis. Because with the way, the hectic life that we typically, I have, sometimes can pull me away. So this is a way of practice that can help bring me back in touch with my soul. Yeah. I also made a list about how, <coughs> how you can take some of these spiritual practices and the spiritual wisdom of shamanism and bring it into your everyday life. 
в ежедневной жизни. The idea being that even though this is a modern world and we're so advanced and we know so much, we still have a need for the numinous. We still have a need for the spiritual. We have a need to connect with spirit, to connect with our soul, to connect in a sense of community. So, as I said in the little write-up, I would talk a little bit about how do we bring this and integrate the wisdom into your professional life. And these are all things that you can do to enhance your professional practice. One thing is to see your work as a sacred ceremony. A calling to service. Bring a sacred attitude to your work. Do not see it as just work or something to be accomplished, but really be able to see, frame it as a sacred practice. Another thing is to set up your office in a sacred way, if you haven't already. Keep it simple and clean, bring in sacred objects, set up an altar, духовные какие-то объекты вы можете устроить себе алтарь and create sacred space that's one of the things about shamanism is that we can create sacred space there are many ways to do that by connecting with spirit by using sacred objects by doing ritual we can actually create sacred space и для этого нам нужно создать вокруг себя Call in your help, helping spirits to be with you and take a moment to clear the energy in the room after every client. Any client that comes in to see you will leave the residue energy in that office space. So think about it in energetic terms to clear out that energy for the next, to prepare for the next client that's coming in. Also, if you know how to journey, continue your own inner work to help you work in a more clear, healing, and ethical way. And outside of client sessions, if you know how to journey, you can always journey on issues and problems that you have with, it, with your clients. Шаманские путешествия, чтобы найти ответы на то, как вам How to integrate this into your personal life? Again, create a sacred space in your home. Set up one or more altars. Bring that spiritual energy into your home. Be aware of and clear any energetic blocks that are in, or intrusions that are in your home or in your body, your energetic body. Start your day with a morning prayer of gratitude for all your blessings and ask for guidance and protection on a daily basis. Participate in offered ceremonies, rituals, and shamanic journey circles if they're offered in your area. Journey to your helping spirits on a regular basis. And as Serge mentioned, spend time in nature to connect with the earth and the spirits and notice what nature is trying to share with you. So, to end this, I just want to reiterate that, yes, there are many therapeutic benefits and healing qualities to the practice of shamanism. If you haven't learned how to journey, you might um, try it and see how it might benefit your life. And, um, thank you. <laughs> Спасибо.